Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? What's good? Wow. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing well. Anyways, uh, first of all, introduction. My name is Tiffany, Tiffany Reka. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. <laughs> and if you're someone who frequently visits this channel and has not subscribed already, please subscribe. And for my returning subscribers, watchers, I love you guys so much. Thank you for always coming back here to watch big content and please don't forget to always share if you found this content helpful or entertaining or whatsoever so yeah Whew, okay i want to be calm because today what we're about to discuss is really personal to me but yeah so if you're new here you would not know this anytime you see me in these four corners this is my bedroom it means we're about to get really up close and personal like really really personal so yeah, I don't want to beat around the bush too much. I just want to share my story with you guys. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Please, before I start, I am not sharing this story to discredit anybody, to make anybody look bad, to bring a bad name to anybody or whatsoever. I'm not doing this for any of that. I'm just doing this to make awareness for people to actually know that things like this actually happen all over the world not just in this part of the world or that part of the world it happens everywhere so a lot of you are familiar with the the saying sex for grades sex for grades is very real it happens all over the world it doesn't just happen in africa it happens abroad it happens everywhere so um this story i'm about to share to you i had wrapped it up my head like for the longest time because it was not something I wanted to remember but I remember the story again when the story Sex for Grace came out, the BBC content and I remember that day I was at work and I remember some colleagues of mine talking about it and them saying that mm, they are sure the girls are lying, this, that, that, that and quickly I was so triggered I became so defensive that day and ever since that day the, I don't know, the um, <clears throat> Ever since that day, the memory has just been coming back. It has just been there in my head. And I just thought to myself that I should really put this story out there and share it with people that might not know or share it with young girls about to start uni. So anyways, in so anyways, no long talk. This is my story. So in so most of you already know that I did a two and a two and a half year program at uni where I went to school. My program was two and a half years actually i didn't do the four years because in my school my school was very flexible you could do like the whole eight semesters in two and a half years yeah that's what yeah that's what they did so that's what i did so when i started i started uni in 2016 yes and um first semester was great for me for those of you that don't really know it, um university here in ghana is not like university in Nigeria that you just probably have the whole one year or whatever. We did like semester by semester. I don't really know how um, Nigeria's university semesters work. I'm sure it's the same thing anyways. So I don't want to like bring any too much long story. I just want you guys to understand where I'm coming from, what I'm talking about. So it was my second semester in uni and um, I was already beginning to love uni. Because of my first semester was great so I knew that my second semester 100 level could be better um, that was the first time I met I'll call him Mr. Bongo for um, you know safety security purpose just to protect his identity because I know maybe most of my classmates might watch this and yeah I yeah anyways okay his name was Mr. Bongo and that was the first time I met Mr. Bongo he took us a course a prerequisite course to what we did in like the previous semester he was a cool guy he made everybody in class laugh that day in fact he even liked nigerians i think a lot of people liked him because of how well he spoke about nigerians like he really liked our culture like he was just a funny man that in class he was even like advice a lot of us that we should start applying for citizenship after like two years of saying you know that kind of funny lecturer and me um i'm not one to mingle with people even when i was in uni as soon as i'm done with class i just stand up and leave talkers of even like talk to my lecturer so that day uh, what's it called 
he while well, after class ended i mean he gave us a quiz and i i got like i think i, I scored the highest score that day so um after class he was like oh who's this i was like he called my index number and i was like oh i'm the one and he was like oh wow impressive like first class and you're doing well i was like yeah he was like thank you sir so he now looked at me and like everybody we were all leaving class and he was like keep it up keep it keep being a good girl like you know you're pretty and you're intelligent i was like okay thank you sir and i left so another time we had his class again the second time we had his class. so the second time we had his class um what's it called he asked us that we create he asked that we create a whatsapp group for our um class discussion so we created a whatsapp group and all that yeah we created a group we get so everybody were asked we were all asked to drop our numbers which was normal so i dropped my number everybody dropped their numbers so after the class that day i went home i got a phone call from a strange number and i picked up and i was like hello first of all i had true color my true color said it was Put his phone in but then i'd not known like i'd not like um memorize his um phone name because me and lecturers names like it's something i always used to forget i won't lie like i used to forget names of my lecturers when i was in uni so i was like ah, who's calling me so i'm not like ah. I, I i i picked up i was like hello yeah good evening he was like oh like how are you dear i was like ah, who's calling me there he was like oh this is mr bongo i said ah okay me was sorry before then there was this boy i used to walk around with in school like where nothing was happening between us but we're really close so anyways i want to relate it to what i'm about to tell you guys so he was just like how are you how are you doing i said ah, i'm fine that this is so strange that you called me and he was like um what's he called that he just wanted to check up on me and kind of advise me i was like advise me on what he was like you know you seem like a girl with potentials you're beautiful you cannot just be walking around with small boys he said small boys quotes in quotes i was like ah, i don't understand and he mentioned that guy's name and we're classmates anyway and i was like ah. so i just like oh all right thank you sir so quickly my mind told me to just like End the conversation so i was like oh Sarah, please if you don't mind i was doing something before you called i like to go back to do what i was doing so he was like okay yeah sure see you in class next week i was like yeah so it was really i was feeling so awkward i remember telling my roommate that ah, this why this man called me so that like, ah, just forget so the following week came went for class as usual this time around he said he wanted to see me in his office and in our uni then a teacher doesn't have a rather lecturer doesn't have an office to themselves it's like a teacher's lounge so i kind of felt safe but still weird so i asked my roommate who was my classmate as well my classmate to actually accompany me so i went there he was like how are you that why well, i came to my friend today then he was like trying to make side jokes on it and i was not understanding and i was really having a straight face because i was like why is the sectoral like trying to talk to me you know so I was just like, so he was not saying that, ah, that am I scared of him, that I should get used to him, that he's going to be one of those lecturers I will see forever till I graduate. Like, he's one of those lecturers that I would always have his class, like, every single time in uni. You know those lecturers that, like, you get, yeah, you guys get, she's <laughs> not been experienced. So I was like, oh, and I said, oh, wow, really? And I said, yes. So that was that. Mid-semester exams came. Uh, we wrote our mid-semester exams. That my friend I told you about wrote his mid-semester exams. In fact, when the scores even came out, he had about 95%. He even did very well. Only for end of semester, when our final grades were out, that guy ended up with a C. So he was not like, ah, how did this happen? So not just me, we're all like in a click one day. And we're all talking like, ah, how come this Mr. Bongo gave him C? That? Ah. So one guy was not like, ah, when you are talking to his he's the person that he's eyeing in class why won't he give you a c so i got defensive then i was like what do you mean that when he's talking to the person that's friends because i got defensive because i just knew that he, that person was trying to like trace a sub at me i was like what's that supposed to mean I wasn't like ah, that should calm down it's not obvious that the man likes you i was like man likes me i said i don't understand so that was that that was that we all came to a conclusion that the man purposely maybe failed my friend because of that because i don't see a way that you can get 95 percent in your mid semester and get a good continuous assessment and obviously the the exam they gave us for end of semester was like the repetition of mid semester so i don't see how you can get a c so i think he later on took it up and the man claimed that it was a miss it, um he misgraded the girl something, something like that one stupid thing like that so i just thought that that was like the end of it like i thought that that was it all 
until after that semester 200 level came and um he still tried to talk to me like you know trying to be my friend and me i was really naive when i was in school i want to lie like i was just a very naive person so he would always still try to talk to me in class sometimes i want to even like really like send him like that because i became so worried about him i became so scared but then i was still like talking to him you know just normal lecture thing until one day he called me and this time it wasn't even in the afternoon it wasn't even, even like the first time he called me he called me and he said how are you i said i was fine he said what was i doing i said i just go back to hosa because i think that day i had a morning class which ended about like 1 11 45 so i think i go back to hosa around 12 noon i was like i'm in the hostel and he was like oh what what are you doing in the hostel i was like nothing i'm just resting he now said there's a question he has always wanted to ask me i said i don't understand he was like oh i've been hearing some rumors that you and that guy are actually dating i said okay he said you seem very young i said yes okay so i don't understand where this conversation is getting out that is this an academic purpose um, um call or i don't understand he was like oh i just want to ask you are you a virgin yes you heard me right he asked me if i was a virgin i got i'm a very defensive person let me just say that right now here like i'm very i'm very short fused i'm very defensive like i really don't care who someone is like if you piss me off immediately i react that's how i am so i was like excuse me sir with all due respect what kind of question is that i was like with all due respect that's a very silly question to ask your students i was like oh calm down that we are not kids yet even though i say you're young you are both 18 i know what i mean when i ask you if you're a virgin i said i don't understand sir i hung up and switched up my phone pretending like the phone died so I was so scared because I knew I was having his class like in two days and I didn't want to show up to class. So what I did, I called my mom because I was so scared. I called my mom and I told her that a lecturer had, I just briefed her about what happened like from 100 level that, oh, I never told her because it was meaningless then because it was just like a lecturer looking out for me. But him asking me such a question is very, very disturbing. Like asking me if I'm a virgin, like even my mother, my father has never asked me that question. My parents have never asked me that question. My friends don't ask me those questions. People close to me don't ask me those questions. Your, my, my, a whole lecture is asking me that kind of question what kind of inappropriate question is that because I'd never, trust me I know people might here might be commenting maybe giving the leverage, I, didn't, I did not give you the leverage to ask me such a stupid question and that's how people, that's how perverted people come along, they don't give you, the, you don't have to give them the leverage, they just come as they are so yeah, not to divert, back to the question, but I'm back to the story so, two days later I prayed, I prayed so hard I braced myself up, I went to class then after class i finished i mean i i decided to leave before class before class ended so i i just like stood up and told the course shop that i was not feeling fine i wanted to leave so i think he had taken like he went to he went to take i don't know he left the class at that moment so i was like let me just quickly leave or only for me he was outside and we actually met and i was like ah, am i leaving class already and i said already sunday attendance out. i'm feeling sick he was like oh that was wrong with you i said nothing i'm just feeling sick. i want to quickly go back to my own stuff and i said okay no problem okay fine then later on i think people started noticing that i was talking to the man like this is like poor serious chit chat so and i started hearing people started advice someone advised me and said that oh this man is actually a pervert that he actually does this sex for great thing and he actually does um sorting out for those of you that don't know what sorting out is it's like maybe a boy can pay money to like pass a course buy buy results those kind of things sorting so he does that i was like are you serious so i just acted dumb like i did not know anything so the girl that was even advising me it seemed like she was probably his side chick or something like okay i didn't even mention the man is married he's like twice my age by the way and hello so like the way the girl was acting she was like hmm that she would not want to like maybe hear things about me that maybe i'm sleeping with the man so i was like excuse me sleeping with twitch man like, what kind of nonsense talk is this so i got angry again i was like what kind of like when you came to actually advise me or something and you're already instruating something and this is very stupid and dumb so i stood up i was like what is going on like this is my 200 level i cannot even be i cannot even imagine myself being in this kind of mess like all i do is mind my freaking business try to get my grades and leave so I left and I so after that day I just started really praying so much really studying hard like I dedicated my time to just praying and studying hard because I'm like this one that this kind of thing is already happening to me is something that was bound to happen because yeah I know I'm good looking and thank God for the grace of God that I was not a mumu I was at least I was 
good to an extent in class i did well in class so i was like i'm just banking on that and the lord's strength to get me through school in this place so after everything fast forward fast forward fast forward 300 level now this was the main this was the, the, the actual time that he actually brought the sex for grace topic to me i know you guys are waiting to hear from that part you see the way this perverts work the way these um, lecturers work is that they take their time especially when they see that you're a good student in school you're a lady you're very good like academically you are sound they don't want to, they will not just come at you like that because they know that you know what you're doing so um i took another summer class before 300 level which made me not do all my credits like because my credit hours were too much in my school then once you have about 15 credit hours you cannot add more to it so i had to carry another course to the following semester that following that course i, I took over to the following semester was a course of his so i knew definitely that i was going to be in trouble so i knew i was going to be in trouble for carrying over that course because number one i knew it was going to give me headache you know having like normally we do seven courses per semester now having to do eight so little did i know that i was also going to face something called quarantine quarantine is where you get to do like maybe you have an exam like two exams that appear on the same day so you have to pick which one you do first so you do one in the morning you do one in the evening so that day i was already having two papers plus the extra one i had to do it was part of it so the two of the courses i was having that day were his courses the one i took from the previous semester and the one i was currently having so I, I remember that day i was in the cafeteria i was reading then he comes to the cafeteria and he sees me i was like oh what are you doing this was the day before the exam anyways i was like oh i'm studying he was like you you come you did not do so so and so course last semester how can i say yes but i'm doing it together that coincidentally these are the two courses i'm having i was like okay he said please see me in my office right now i was like i don't understand i was like see me in my office so I decided to just take a brief step, like, okay, let me not do anything. Like, at, at last class, it's even the teacher's lounge, there are about other two other lecturers there. But getting to the, 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 get into the office, it was really only him. Sorry, I'm shaking because, because remembering this thing just makes me very emotional. So, um, I got to his office. So, he had left before me, so I packed up my bag. I said a little prayer, like, God, please do not allow me to say something from my mouth that may be very offensive. Do not allow, do, don't allow this man to say anything from his mouth that is going to be offend me because I don't know what I might say or do. So, I got to the office. He was sitting down. So, I sat down at, like, another corner, which was, like, on the left-hand side. So, I sat down there, and he was like, that. He was like, this is what he said to me. I want to quote him. He said, how are you, young lady? I said, I'm fine. I said, hmm, that you dogged me. I said, I was like, dog, like, what's that? So I was looking at him to a very straight face and I was maintaining eye contact so that he wouldn't know I was scared or whatsoever. He said, you having to have my papers tomorrow? I said, yes, sir. He said, don't write those papers. Come to my house and write those papers. I said, come to your house and write those papers. He said, yes. That are we not close? That I've known you since 100 level. I said, We are not close, sir. You're my lecturer, I'm your student. Like, it's just a funny, it's, it's, like, it's just a coincidence that you're teaching, you're going to teach me to like graduate as you once said in 100 level, that you teach me for I graduate. And he was like, Oh, that you know what I mean. He was like, You're not a child, are you a child? I said, I don't understand what you mean. He said, You don't have to write these exams. Just when it gets to hall, just write your name on the question paper. The question paper, I mean, on the answer booklet. The answer booklet will still come back to me. Write your name on the answer booklet. Both of them. Don't worry. After after exam is done in the evening, come to my house. Come and spend the night with me. I said, sir, what are you insinuating? He was like, get off that. That you're a 300 level student. You know what I mean? I said, wow. He said because I know if you write two papers, if you write two of my papers. My papers are very hard. If you write these two papers, I know you will fail one, and I don't want you to fail one. So I want you to come to my house. I'll help you sort it out. Then you know what to do. I said I know what to do. I said you know what? Thank you, sir. I didn't want to sound rude. I was just like, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I'm leaving now. I was like, okay, no problem. When I got back home, I started crying. I didn't know what to do. I don't know if I called my mom, but I prayed. Like, I really prayed. Like, I put it to prayer. And I read, like, I read overnight. I read the hardest I've ever read in my life in that school. Till today, I've not read as hard as I read that night. I read for these two papers, because the extra one I was still having. I read so hard. I swear I covered like literally every single slide like word for word I covered everything because once about me aside from um, 
reading that day i always like read i always read after classes so i still had things in my head from what i had done i read so hard the day of the exam i had not even slept i went to the hall i remember writing the first paper i wrote it very well with all my heart then the second paper was scheduled to so i wrote the second i mean my second paper not his own paper that i was having that day, because i remember i told you guys i was having three papers so i wrote the second paper then his own was not coming up in the evening because also i was an evening sent to 300 so the other one was coming up in the evening around six o'clock so before six o'clock i got to school early then he saw me he shouted my name for up it was because he's coming by my middle name osaho so i saw him upstairs he was like he was like why did you write that paper that i told you not to write that paper that i finished marking the script i was like you've marked all those scripts already he said yes i was like you didn't do well i said i did not do well me tiffany i didn't do well i said sir you must be joking that if you want to know how well i did i remember every single question you set you set for me that I know what you said for us in that exam hall that I know I did very well so I saw one of my classmates was around the place and like I was like ah so like ah what's happening sir so he greeted the man I was like ah that she didn't do well so that one was like ah sir impossible that of all people she what well, have you said she will not do well so he now said he was not laughing like hmm, you're so confident I said yes I'm so confident of myself I know I did well so he now looked at me and was like oh like anyways I was just joking you actually did well I just looked at him like in disgust and I said excuse me sir and I went downstairs and I went to do his other paper the other one that the last paper that we had and i actually I, I i came out with a good result i don't know I, I think i had a b in that one but the first one i think i had an a so it was just ever since that day he sort of laid off me like he saw that i was not just i'm not trying to even like hype myself or say anything perfect about myself but you know something there you have some girls in uni that they are very intelligent but they are timid you cannot be timid you cannot be scared dealing with men as a woman let me tell you because men i'm not even trying to say this to insult any man or woman but men will intimidate you if you let them they will literally intimidate you as a woman that day me defending myself i became so defensive in fact normally people is telling me that ah, babe calm down calm down you're always too defensive but that day that day my defensiveness literally put a ground for me ever since that day he sees me, I greet, good morning. I was still greeting him, how are you? He still taught me till I graduated, good morning, how are you? That was it. So guys, like, the essence of this story, number one, is for you people to actually know that there is sex for great. It does exist. It happened to me. It took a slow process, but it happened. Someone asked me, but thank, thank God I, I put God first and I put my studies next. That is how it works in school. School life is very hard. And don't say, if, if, whether you're beautiful as a woman or you're not beautiful, these lecturers are going to come at you. And these lecturers are going to probably fail your boyfriends for just liking you, for just following you because they just want to fail them. The lecturers are sought every day. Do not let your guards down. Probably if I was not an intelligent girl, probably if I don't know book or anything, probably he would have had his way with me and I would still be my lecturer. I'm happy right now that he has been sacked from the school. The school has found out it took a lot of years for them to find out but he has been sacked now from the school because they found out what he was doing they found out he was sleeping with female students they found out he was um sorry i haven't forgot a major detail that i did not mention yes that first time that he actually said that inappropriate thing to me about the sex thing i was a very naive person so i went to actually report to someone that was above him like i think the student head i'm not going to for the sake of any of my mates watching this i don't want anybody to know what i'm talking about but i went to report to someone that was of a higher level i do you know what that man told me he was like um you see university things happen that this thing just happened that i should just continue just putting my head up that was what he said to me put your head up I came to tell you about a lecturer that was literally kind of trying to harass me, asking me if I was a virgin, calling me at a weird hour, talking to me funny. I also even reported that, oh, he, he said I should come to his house, I was like, oh, maybe that. I also now found out in the long run that that man too was doing the same thing with girls. So see, a lot of these things happen, like it happens every day. Never ever feel intimidated as a woman, never feel weak as a woman, do not feel like you're, you're a cheap girl because a man comes to shoot his shot at you no don't, don't feel like that just if you're in uni right now it's something that you might expect and let me tell you something i went to one of the best private schools here in ghana so it's not like i went to an anyhow school or people feel people feel that it's only public schools that this thing happens no it happens around everywhere in the world even to schools like harvard abroad these things happen they happen every day prestigious schools in nigeria you hear of lecturers getting girls pregnant stuff like that it happens everywhere so never ever feel like these things don't happen and 
just protect yourself as a woman just pray hard and read hard read hard in school though because lecturers are looking for the slightest some perverted lecturers rather are looking for the slightest opportunity for you to sleep as a student for you to just fill down one course so they can jump in twist your mind and say things like i heard a lot of awful things about this lecturer but i'm not going to be the one to come here and put out more details but this is just my story and i hope that someone out there can actually learn this story and just you know just I just wanted to bring awareness and share my story of what happened to me in uni. So, anyways, guys, um, that's it for today. Uh, yeah, if you like this content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'm sorry this video was very long, but yeah, it's a story worth sharing. And even if I did not really sound <laughs> um, arranged in most terms, because I was just really trying to remember the story for you guys. Because as I said, the memories just started coming and coming and coming after the triggering sex for grace thing that happened last year. So yeah, guys, um, thank you very much and bye.